people who had died from smallpox and they catapulted them into the American forts, trying to, in other words, which was a very crude attempt at biological warfare. Now, I'm sure that went the other way, too. That was a very crude attempt at biological warfare, but I think it's the first one on record. I, I'm going to go back and be a nerd here because I am and I, I like history. It's the first one in American records. However, catapulting disease bodies over the castle walls is a European tradition. Okay, so that so goes going back that, to what, the Black Plague? That and... goes way back to the Black Plague. That goes back to the days where they were trying to get the Prince of Darkness himself, Dracula, out of his castle. They were launching diseased bodies into his area. Okay, so when they used to see... All right, so when they used to catapult the, the head bodies or the heads, that wasn't just psychological warfare. No, that wasn't. They, were, they knew what they were doing, and that was, that's been happening since the catapults existed. Like, let's take this rotten body and sling it over there and see what happens. You want to you you meet the person that first thought of that. <laughs> Isn't it? They looked at these rotting bodies and <laughs> just put a lot of thought and effort into figuring out a way to get those over the castle wall. Because even the <laughs> Romans, the Romans were known for doing that. To get you out of where you were going, they would send diseased animals into that area for you to feed upon. Huh. So the only stuff that you were left to eat was a diseased cow or something. So chemical warf warfare has been there since we've known of diseases. Uh, it's just one of the first in American, uh, probably. Okay. The first on the North American continent, maybe. Yeah. Did you, did you get the... Yep. Yeah, I yeah. kind of sort of have an answer for okay, you. Okay, we have another disease report from Nurse Misery. <laughs> Go. So Ebola, the first... Um, well, I guess the cases that they had found were in 76, and it was from the Congo, uh -huh. and it was in primates as well as humans, So, but it was, I guess they were saying in one particular article that the apes were accidental hosts of the virus and were able to spread it. Well, yeah, I don't think anybody so got that on purpose. It's not like they're saying, oh, it started with apes versus it started with humans, because another one was saying how they found... It more in the humans and also found it in apes afterwards. So it kind of depends on whose article you're reading, but apparently all of us primates. So it targeted primates. Yes. It's a nasty disease that targets primates only. And it's okay. only contracted through um, either blood or some sort of bodily fluid. Okay, are we going to get back to ape banging on this one? <laughs> Pretty much. I was trying to avoid it. I, that's why I'm like, well, this is the we, fourth we article we avoid, that involves we avoid primates, and I'm really trying not to be the one. We avoid nothing on this show. We, we go for the gritty truth. Well, someone was kissing a monkey. Gotcha. And that's uh -oh. not happened. I see fingers. Oh, he wants to grab the monkey's tatas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes. Tony Jones either wants to grab the monkey or he's telling us that we are in drastic need of cutting this short to bring up a little bit more music because we are heading toward the finish line. How about, uh, yeah, let's go with uh, let's, a little Amber Asylum. How about this? Oh, talk about segues. Silence of the Setting Sun. Ominous. Here on the Haunted Cabaret on Rhode Island Free Radio.
All right. That was Amber Asylum, Silence of the Setting Sun. As I say, a rather ominous uh, song to finish up a discussion of plague, disease, and all things destructive. Um, yeah, so basically my choice of worst plague would, would be to go with smallpox. And the scariest thing, as we wrap up the show this week, is doesn't our friendly United States government have test tubes full of every single one of these little bugs that we've been talking about? They do. They have a special department whose job is to study this stuff. And they have it in canisters, smallpox, everything, inside these little canisters in good old USS of A. Yep. I mean, I remember I took a, when I was in school, I took a, you know, as an elective, I took a microbiology course because I was curious about this stuff. Basically, you know, I was wondering if you could really die from sitting on a toilet seat. So, you know, I took this microbiology course, and by the way, I found out the answer is usually no. Right. You know, that most, you know, your butt cheeks do not pick up too many diseases from toilet seats. But... The thing I remember most is, you know, when the teacher had us look through microscopes, you know, at these, at, so we could actually see these, you know, disease bugs and these germs. And the one I selected, you know, she handed out a bunch of them. And the one I happened to select was gonorrhea. And, you know, I looked through the microscope at that little gonorrhea creature. I could swear that it was smiling up at me. <laughs> of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of yeah, kind of like, you know, I'll get you yet. It's just that that little evil smile, kind of like the one on the face of Chuckles the Clown. <laughs> was your teacher trying to hint at something with the gonorrhea slide that she gave you? I like to think that it was random choice. <laughs> I like to think that, but like I said, but what stays with me is the evil grin on that little gonorrhea. Did she give you her, her phone number afterwards? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> At least the gonorrhea was smiling at you. With an, that's not prom, that's not hopeful. <laughs> well, that's better a smile than a stab in the back. Yeah, my crabs don't smile at me ever. They're always pitching me. But it was a smile of promise. <laughs> <laughs> promise that you're gonna get gonorrhea after you're done with the teacher. Boom, 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 boom. Chuckles. Chuckles. <laughs> we every now and then we, by accident, we discover things. Deep in the clown's psyche. Sometimes it's is traumatizing. This, is, is there some kind of teacher thing going on with you now, too? Always hot for teacher. I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we've already found the armadillo thing this week. <laughs> the the anteater thing. Yeah, from anteaters. And... To teacher. To, yeah, to science teachers. I'll tell you what. If anybody wants to know the answer to that, Message me. I'll tell you if I've had a crush on a teacher or two, or I've crushed a teacher or two. I'll, I'm not putting that on the airways. All right. Oh, you so. <laughs> <laughs> you just got read it out. <laughs> thank you very much, Tony Jones. And thank you very much, everyone, for listening to this episode of the Haunted Cabaret here on Rhode Island Free Radio. Uh, let's get out of here with um, yeah. How about some? Let's do some Neil Young and Crazy Horse. That'll be different. Um, yeah, this is one of Neil Young's most nihilistic and hopeless themed songs. It's so perfect for a discussion of plague and disease. This is Powderfinger, closing out the haunted cabaret. Nighty night. Look out, mama, there's a white boy.